Isn't it funny how just the name of something can affect your perception? Take for example, cola. I'm a Coke man myself, but with the blindfold on, I don't think I can tell the difference. Likewise, this is the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. And if you take away that iconic seven slot grill and all the badging on the outside, Jeep is hoping to leave a better taste in your mouth than you might expect. The 2023 Grand Cherokee is more refined and better equipped than ever before, but also a lot more expensive. So does Jeep have a genuine Coca-Cola on their hands? Or is this car a bit like settling for a Coke, no sugar? There's no getting around the fact that this new generation Jeep Grand Cherokee five seater is a lot more expensive than before. We're talking $17,500 more expensive when comparing base car to base car. And while that price rise does ease a little bit the higher up you go, in the year of our Lord 2023, that means that the entry level Night Eagle is priced at $77,950 before on road costs. The mid spec Limited is priced at $83,950, an increase of $9,500, while this top spec for now Overland I have with me here comes in at just under $100,000. Its price tag of $98,450 is an increase of $14,000 from before. And while some of you might balk at the fact that the Grand Cherokee is way more expensive than before, at least Jeep has thrown in the whole kit and caboodle when it comes to equipment, making at least this pill a little easier to swallow. Standard equipment starts with 20 inch alloy wheels, leather and suede seats, power adjustable front seats, a powered tailgate, LED headlights, heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, a 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster, keyless entry and push button start. There's also a 10.1 inch multimedia touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, making smartphone mirroring so easy. Stepping up to the Limited adds full leather seats, a heated second row, cooled front seats, interior ambient lighting and an uprated nine speaker sound system with active noise cancelling. Finally, the top tier Overland like we have here scores Napa leather interior, cooled rear seats, a hands-free tailgate, a panoramic sunroof, and chrome touches for the exhaust and side seals. Being a Jeep, this top spec Grand Cherokee Overland also has the brand's Quadra Track 2 active 4x4 system with select terrain and air suspension with adaptive damping. This means you can adjust between different drive modes like sand, mud, rock, auto, and even sport. Honestly, it's an equipment list that you'd expect out of any car in the $80,000 plus price bracket. The equipment list is comprehensive though, and you basically get everything that you could want out of a new car. I will also make special mention of this sound system, which to my non-audiophile ears at least, sounds absolutely banging. I feel really awkward doing that. But raising the price and calling it premium isn't enough. To be truly premium, you have to have an upmarket interior, a refined driving experience, and a level of desirability, at the very least. And look, we've all heard of the premium German brands, we've got premium Japanese and even Korean brands now, but can Jeep step it up to become the first truly premium American brand in Australia? On the desirability front, styling has a large part to play in that. And from the outside at least, the new generation Grand Cherokee is a much better looking car overall. It's much more modern in design thanks to the sharper edges, boxier aesthetic and more confident stance. Of course, there's the signature seven slot Jeep grille at the front, but the slim LED headlights and chiseled chin do wonders for the front fascia. Even in profile, the body colored squared off wheel arches and slender glass house make it feel much more Range Rover rather than Ford Ranger. Although I think these 20 inch wheels could be an inch or two bigger to help fill out the corners. There is a reason why they're only 20 inches though, and that's because the wheels are wrapped in very, very meaty 265 tires to help when the terrain gets a little bit rougher. And Jeep has managed to pull off a little neat trick here as well, because in profile, if you have a look at the extended wheelbase, the longer bonnet and the longer rear overhang, combined with the blacked out pillars and the narrower window line, you can almost, almost see that the Grand Cherokee looks like a jacked up wagon. 
From the back, slim tail lights, bumper integrated exhaust outlets, and a tiny roof spoiler are the standout features. And it all culminates in a much more mature and confident Grand Cherokee than before. Does that make this car desirable? Well, ultimately, I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions, but if you've ever lusted after a large American SUV like the Cadillac Escalade or Chevy Suburban, well, this Grand Cherokee is probably the closest you're gonna get. Step inside and it's a sea of soft touch and high-end materials, at least in this top spec grade. The Nappa leather, it feels soft and supple throughout. And there's even a faux wood grain inlay for that old school luxury vibe. And the center console knobs and buttons, pretty pleasant to fiddle with. The rotary shifter is also a nice upmarket touch. Made from brushed metal, it feels weighty and has feedback when selecting gears and it's just generally nice to interact with. These seats though, where do I begin? The backrest, it's flat and very unergonomic and there's very little side bolstering, which means while you're driving, you kind of move around a bit. Look, I'm a pretty slim guy, so there are gonna be people out there that are better suited to seats like this, but that's just not me. The saving grace though, is that both front seats come equipped with a massage function. And when you've had a long day at work and you're stuck in traffic, who doesn't love a back rub? Overall, is the cabin quality better than before? Absolutely, no doubt about that. But the Grand Cherokee is still held back by a few niggly quality control issues. I have to point out that this test car has a bit of a loose interior trim piece here, and the doors, they don't quite close with that satisfying thud that a premium car should. The new generation Grand Cherokee has grown in every dimension compared to its predecessor, which of course means more space and practicality. Let's start with the boot. In this five seat configuration, the Grand Cherokee will swallow a massive 1,067 liters of volume. It's more than enough for small families like mine, and even enough for the gear you would need for a week long camping trip. Fold the rear seats down and we're looking at a capacious 2,004 litres. So be prepared to be called on by friends if they need help moving. And the second row affords plenty of space for passengers too. I mean, just look at how much room I've got. Even the middle seat is usable thanks to the relatively flat floor. Back here, passengers have access to their own climate control system. There's a fold down centre armrest. You've got back seat map pockets and four air vents. Stepping into the front seat, it is positively palatial in here. You can stretch out nearly as wide and as long as you want, and there are a few neat little practicality touches too, like an electronically adjustable steering column and a seat memory function. The in-cabin technology is also great. The multimedia is a standout. It's snappy and responsive, and you've actually got physical buttons littered around, so you don't have to dive into like six different menus to adjust the in-cabin temperature by half a degree. The wireless smartphone charger, is also a really handy addition and helps out with that wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto functionality. And you can even get a Jeep smartphone app that lets you monitor your car while you're away. Storage options are also abundant in here. You've got large door pockets that will take large bottles. You've got two cup holders for your cans of Coke. Uh, there's a wireless smartphone charger, like I mentioned before, and there's a two tiered underarm storage cubby, as well as a generous glove box. Regardless of which version of the Jeep Grand Cherokee you end up with, all are powered by a 3.6 litre V6. It's actually a carryover engine from the previous generation. And this engine is paired to an eight speed automatic transmission that naturally sends drive to all four wheels. This means the Grand Cherokee is one of the least powerful petrol models in the large SUV over $70,000 class beating only the two litre versions of the Jaguar F-Pace, Range Rover Velar, and Volvo XC90, as well as the hybrid heavy Lexus RX range. However, the peak torque figure is actually the lowest in class, losing out against rivals that have much newer turbocharged or hybridized engines. Sadly, without a diesel or petrol V8 in the new Grand Cherokee range, all 2023 versions, including the seven seaters, feature a brake towing capacity of just 2.8 tonnes. And without that V8, it means no performance-focused SRT or Trackhawk variants this time around either. Sad. However, a plug-in hybrid powertrain is due to launch by the end of the year and will sit as the flagship in the Grand Cherokee five-seater lineup, but full Australian details are still to be finalized. 
Officially, the Jeep Grand Cherokee five-seater returns a fuel economy figure of 9.9 .9 liters per 100 kilometers. And while that is 0.7 liters per 100 kilometers better than the seven-seat version, with a large car must also come large fuel bills. In my time with the car, I managed to get 16.3 liters per 100 kilometers, mainly thanks to inner city driving. Your mileage, of course, will vary, but there's no doubting the new Grand Cherokee, like many a teenager on Instagram, is thirsty. Jeep has included stop-start engine technology as well as a front axle disconnect feature on this top grade variant to help improve fuel economy. But the Grand Cherokee's figures are still north of rivals that feature smaller displacement turbocharged engines or hybridization. Thankfully, the Grand Cherokee will take 91 run petrol, helping ease the sting at the Bowser, but its massive 87 litre tank will take a bit to fill. Carbon dioxide emissions come in at 236 grams per kilometer. Naturally, your fuel economy figure will be reflective of how diligent you are with the right foot. But with that 3.6 litre petrol V6 up front, the throttle pedal does need a bit of encouragement. Peak torque comes in at a fairly early 4,000 RPM, which means the Grand Cherokee doesn't need that much to get going. But keep in mind, this is a 2.2 ton SUV. So it's not exactly gonna come away from the lights quickly. Once you get going though, this engine does a great job at keeping things humming along. And that eight speed automatic transmission, it kind of just fades into the background as it shifts smoothly and seamlessly. If you need to overtake though, this V6 does get a bit coarse and loud as the revs climb. But when you're just traveling about around town, it's smooth and unobtrusive. If a little antiquated next to rivals that have more advanced turbocharged and hybrid engines. The steering wheel though, it can get surprisingly heavy. So don't skip arm day. And that's probably because this Grand Cherokee is fitted with the 20 inch wheels and 265 wide tires. This is a little at odds with Jeep's premium aspirations. And even on the tamest drive mode setting of auto, it can be a bit of a workout around town. This top spec car is also fitted with air suspension, which should help soak up the bumps of everyday life. But in this regard, it's also a little hit and miss. Small potholes and speed bumps are fine when you're coming at them dead on. But the second you try to tackle a driveway at an angle or one corner is elevated above another, it can rock you about a fair bit. Sport mode can help out in this regard and it actually lowers the car a little bit. But in terms of ride comfort, I think I'd like to see Jeep do a little bit more fine tuning. The trade-off though is that the longer suspension travel means that the Jeep Grand Cherokee will be able to tackle some serious terrain that would make most SUVs cower in fear. Jeep's unique four-wheel drive modes will let you tame even the most terrifying of trails. And while I've not had a chance to put this specific car through its paces, our review of the seven seat version last year proves that the 2023 Grand Cherokee still has what it takes to tackle even the Toyota Land Cruiser and Nissan Patrol when the going gets rough. The 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee does not have an ANCAP rating, but it was awarded a maximum five-star rating from Euro NCAP last year. The tested model, however, was a left-hand drive plug-in hybrid version, so it remains to be seen how much this carries over to Aussie spec cars. Key safety system highlights include autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, driver attention alert, traffic sign recognition, adaptive cruise control, and rear cross traffic alert, which are standard across the board. Limited grades and higher also score a surround view monitor and automatic high beams. But if you want to know more, a full safety breakdown can be found at carsguide.com.au. Like all new Jeeps, the Grand Cherokee comes with a five year, 100 kilometer warranty. And while the Grand Cherokee has had a questionable reliability history in the past, Jeep points to the fact that this car is built in an all new facility with the latest and greatest in quality control as assurance. Time will tell though. Scheduled service intervals are every 12 months or 12,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first, and each service for the first five years will set you back $399 under Jeep's cap price servicing scheme. With aspirations to push up market and become more premium, does Jeep get there with the Grand Cherokee? Well, in a word, yes. There's no doubting that this is a glow up of epic proportions. It's more refined, supremely comfortable, and is loaded with so much equipment but the car is let down somewhat by a lackluster powertrain and on-road driving dynamics. 
However, if you're after a big and brash, unashamedly American SUV, well, the 2023 Grand Cherokee is about as nationalistic as a can of Coke. <laughs>